Hey guys, so let's finish with the stone blocks and the last thing we need to do is change the color of this placeholder once we move the block on top of it and also add some sound effect. For the color we need to go to our materials, open this block placeholder material and then just right click on this constant and convert it to parameter. This will be color. We'll apply and save. And then in the block placeholder, here after we begin overlap, the center overlap, we need to, after this, just drag out the mesh and create dynamic material instance. And this one will be the block placeholder material. And then we're going to promote it to variable and this will be placeholder reference, uh, material reference, mat ref. And what we want to do after is a timeline. And we're going to change the color on the timeline. So open it up. Then I'm going to change this to only one second so it just lights up add the flow track right click add key this will be zero and zero add another key and this will be one and one so in one second it will go to value of one then what we need to do is we can also rename this and this will be change color compile and save go back to event graph here we will play it and on, on update we want to get this placeholder mat reference and we're going to set vector parameter value so that will let us change the parameter and here we just need to put color which is name of our parameter make sure it's the same as here otherwise it won't work so color that will be on update and then from this value we can lerp linear color this will be alpha so this will just go one second from one color to another one here we will make color and we need to just copy it and paste it here so our original color will be color from here i don't think there is a way to copy it correctly so what you can do is just save this color drag it up here so we have it for later just in case and then we just need to get this value so it's 0 0.27 1 and 0 0.99 for me whatever it is for you just do it do the same ones so 0 0.27 1 and 99 0 0.27 1 and 0 0.99 i'll just double check it yeah that's fine and also alpha should be one and then i'm going to change it to maybe like a green color and this is why i save it because then i wouldn't be able to go back to default one and i want to have something maybe stronger so they're not very similar something like that there we go maybe lighter press ok and this is the color we need to copy. So 0 0.04, 0 0.64. No, oh, this is easier. So 0 0.04, 0 0.64. And then the last value is 0 and 1. 0 and 1. Now you can just change this to default one. Apply and save. And now we will be changing from one color to another one. Before this, we also want to check if this placeholder material reference, we will get it, right click and convert to validated get, if it's already valid. Because once we create it after here, we don't want to be creating it all the time. So if it's valid, uh, we just need to play the timeline. This 
will go up here and if it's not valid I'm going to move this whole thing down we need to still create dynamic material instance and here when we stop overlapping we will just play this from reverse so just reverse not reverse from end because we want to go if we by any chance move the block like past it straight away it needs to stop where it is the color and go back so compile and save and now I won't see it very well with this sound, so I'm going to hold Ctrl and L and just move the sound down. Yeah, something like this. Play the game. We'll take a minute to light up. And then if I move this on top, you can see it's shining green. All right, that's one thing. And now we just need to add sound as well, because at the moment we don't really know when that happens, when it actually overlaps. So for the sound, I found and edited one sound that I really liked, because it works both ways for overlapping and stop overlapping. And what did I call it again? It's this one, block activated. So. If you want, I'll share it on the Patreon as well, or other than that, just find the sound that you like. I wanted something like, a, you know, when you log into Windows, just like a basic, like whoosh, like an enchanting sound or something, but I couldn't really find anything, so I had to edit my own. And after you have sound, what we need to do is in the block placeholder, we need to go to just before this, before we play the timeline, I'll just move it back. And then I'm going to play sound 2D. Doesn't need to be at location. Doesn't really matter as long as it plays. And then this will be block activated. And here, when we ending the overlap, after we deactivate the block, this go back to this goes back to reverse. And here I'm going to do same thing, block activated, but I'm going to change the pitch to 0 0.5. And now if I play the game, it's a very simple setup. I just go this. And you can see I have this sound. And if I stop overlapping, I have that one, which actually works really well because I really like it, it's very different. So that actually worked by accident when I changed the pitch. So um, and that yeah, that's pretty much it. As I said, it wasn't a long video. So what we can do is I'm just going to do one more example. And actually before that I just remember one more thing. So I have noticed that if I go against this and jump still pushing it which it probably shouldn't because it doesn't sound very good and you're not really able to push something when you're jumping so to fix it let's just go back to block placeholder sorry to stone block open this function which is check push rotation here when we check in this correct angle we're going to get player reference get character movement is the component on the bottom get character movement and we need to check is falling and that will be this nav movement and we need to check not boolean so if we are not falling we can execute so now we will just do end boolean here and then if both of these are true we go to pushing and we go to set simulate physics and this way, if I do the same thing, it will stop, which looks a little bit better. And then I'll just give you one more example of what we can actually do with this, uh, just in case you didn't get it the first time. So in the blueprints and actors, we do have all of these that we could use. So ladder, for example, is also a child of base interactable actor. So functionality is already here. We don't need to copy it on anything. 
Um, we just need to get this mm, 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 mm. event, sorry, interact. So interfaces, and this will be execute blog event. And what I want to do here is maybe just get ladder position. So get actor location and set actor location. And this will just be break it as a vector and I'm going to change the location Z and subtract from it maybe 200. That's too much, maybe 100. So I'll lower the ladder by 100. And then break this open. This will go to X, this will go to Y, this will go to Z. This can be done on a timeline as well, so slowly it actually lets the ladder down. So now, if I place this in a game, and let's say it started a little bit out of reach. And then here I'll set blocks needed to two. On these blocks, I'm going to change this door to the ladder. So it has ladder BP. Here I'm going to change it to ladder BP. So that's the actor it's going to affect. And now if I play the game, and then if I move this block, Now watch the ladder, there we go, it went down. So yeah, that's how we set it up, hopefully this makes it clear and we can move on to other things. One thing you need to be careful about is if you don't set any false event on that, so like if I don't have ladder returning to position then obviously I can just go away, then it overlapped, the very, overlapped again probably. And not only it overlapped, but also when it end overlap, it fires the same event because it doesn't check if it's true or false. So it does it over and over. So I can just be moving this block and this ladder will go down all the time. So you just need to make sure that on this event here, you want to have should execute and should not execute and then do different events. Or you can even disable it. So you could set up the uh, Boolean that will be it's activated and if it's activated here then you can't do it again so that will be done all right so that's it i'll see you in the next one bye